There you go. That was fun. <laughs> you go, Matt. We should have gotten our cats to join in. You should have gotten Mila. Should I grab Sasha out of the kitchen? You know. <coughs> That's Hold great. Up sing, sing, Sasha. <laughs> well, how how have you been, my love? How have you? Been? I've been doing pretty good, Whimsy. Just staying busy, but doing good. How about you? I'm enjoying, you know, I am a spring baby. I just turned 61 uh, years old last month. Yes. And of course, I look incredible. You look awesome. You look awesome. I'm just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> I hope I remembered to say happy birthday to you. I'm just thinking. You did. Oh, good. Good. You said happy birthday. And then you said something about booking a patient. So it was rather. That's uh, probably why I don't remember it. Was Kurt, Kurt and to the point, like Ooh. happy birthday, and your patient called the guardian. Business yeah. pleasure. <laughs> yes. Well, that's oh. nice. You know, not. Well, you know, thing is, you look friggin' fabulous for sixty-one. I think yeah. some people out there will agree. You're amazing. Oh, you're so sweet. Now let's go ahead. We'll turn the camera around while people are coming to our amazing Taco Tuesdays. Yeah. I'm excited about this show. Are you excited about this show? I'm excited. You've been, you know, you always send me material beforehand, videos to watch, to prepare. And I was looking through it going, oh my God. Oh my God. What a show we're going to have today. I have <laughs> notes. <laughs> I yeah well you know I I get letters and everyone is free to write me and I receive amazing yeah. letters and I can't always get back to everyone and for that I am apolo uh, I do apologize by the way I want to give a shout out to Diane Tiari uh, she sent some amazing lo uh, cr uh, lotions actually I'm gonna take a second and go get that because it's worth mentioning um, I think it was her that oh, let me go get this uh, thing talk amongst yourself say hi to people talk amongst myself. <laughs> A caveat topic. I don't know. I feel like, uh, what was that? Uh, that old SNL skit. Uh, Linda Richmond uh, talking about Barbara Streisand being like, but I'll give you a topic about the Prince of Tides. Talk amongst yourselves. How's everybody doing out there? I see. We like have... butter. Da yeah, it's like butter. Like butter. <laughs> the first Streisand concert I ever went to, I've been to four. Uh, it was back in 1994, and she had Mike Myers as Linda Richmond planted out in the audience, and she was talking on stage, and Linda Richmond stands up, Barbara, Barbara, I just have to come up on stage and be with you. You're like butter. You're like Land of Lakes. And it was so cute. They did this whole thing. Yeah. So anyway, what were you going to show us? Oh, I think it was Diane that sent me yeah. this beautiful uh, dream cream. Dream cream? 
Dream Cream. You can get it on Etsy. Um, yeah. Essential oils in this are absolutely incredible. I, I, I've i never, oh boy. Oh, she has the ingredients here. Um, well, she says it's a blend of essential oils, but I love cream. I, first up, I love supporting local businesses. Noble yeah. Soul Apple Carry, available on Etsy, or goes directly to Noble Soul farm.com this is actually chuck's job um chuck i don't know if you have a p.o box where people can send their products but you may want to get one because he's actually our we should he's our ed mcmahon so he's actually the person supposed to be doing this <laughs> um so you need to set that up but anyway um, and so noble soul uh etsy is uh i think and also noble soul farm.com it smells absolutely amazing but if you take a look at the consistency of this it is so, I, the smell blows my mind. I put it directly on my face. What does it smell like? It makes my skin feel so good. And yeah. uh, I put it on everything. But, you know, I, you know how they say I will work for food? This is one of those companies I will promote if she keeps supplying me product. I mean, really. Yeah. Because I, this is one of the... That she didn't pay me. She just gave me, a, you know, here, have some. Maybe if you like it, go ahead. And, um, but I do. And I, I never come out and do this unless I actually like a product because I don't yeah. get paid. I, you know, you're going to get paid. <laughs> um, anyway, so, um, yeah. So if you have a product and you'd like to advertise it, you can send it to my P.O. box, which is uh, information below. Um, eventually, I think Chuck's going to get set up that you can mail his stuff somewhere so that because he is our oh, editor. Yeah, so I got this. And then she was also nice enough uh, to send me this soothing spray. And this stuff is amazing. Also, my cat, by the way, is really into amazing scents. Yeah. Mila, did you smell this one? I almost feel like I can vicariously smell that from here. <laughs> You, you have no idea. And when uh, the stress we are under right now, and by the way, I have this in my bathroom. So when I come out of the shower, I spray my body yeah. down with this stuff. I went out with my godchildren and my uh, best friend, Darlene Christopher, and they were like smelling on me. They were smelling mm. on me. I had this and I also put on some, I like smelling good. And uh, I also got uh, sandalwood. I'm all, I want to. Yeah, I love sandalwood. I want to be like, be like Cleopatra. Yeah. Well, Cleopatra, you know, used henna on her hair. Red henna. The same, Lucille Ball used the same henna that Cleopatra used. Yes, she used actual Egyptian henna, imported. Are you serious? Very serious. Uh, there was a story, I don't want to get off the track here, a story in the no. early 50s. She was running out of her henna and she was freaking out because her hair was going two-tone. And she was at a party and she was talking to the the Egyptian ambassador, he said, oh, I'll get you all the henna you want. But apparently there was some sort of trade embargo or something. Uh, about a week later, this truck pulled up with boxes and boxes of henna and she stacked it up in her garage. She had enough what? for the rest of it. Yeah. <coughs> That's a great story. It is. It, but it was allegedly the same henna that Cleopatra used. Wow. So well, that makes sense. Let me think of that. We talked about the fragrance here. Well, she came from Alexandria, and that's an area where Greece, where Egypt and Africa meet. So, I mean, just yeah. the scholarship. She had people coming from all over the world. Oh, she was a brilliant woman. Incredible woman. Incredible. I mean, a lot more incredible than the way she was portrayed by Elizabeth Taylor. That's the way people yeah. tend to think of her. And a lot of ancient Alexandria, you probably know this, is submerged underwater now. You To see a lot of those temples and statues and so forth you have to scuba dive now because mm. of you know global warming over the years and shifting of tides and so forth uh, it's all i don't i forget how many under how many feet of water it is mm -hmm. yeah her entire library but she was she's a she was a genius child she was literally grew up running around libraries she spoke something like 11 languages she wrote several wow. books herself she wrote one book on how to be beautiful and with all of her beauty creams, she made her own lotions. All this stuff, by the way, is very close to what Cleopatra was doing because she was, if you, you take a mastic gum or any, any uh, gums can do it and you mix an oil with a water with a kind of gum to hold them together, 
you're mm -hmm. going to get a cream. And so that kind of technology comes from North Africa. I mean, the, the beauty experts really came from Africa and North Africa up into mm -hmm. Alexandria. And so they wrote books on beauty, everything from henna to coal on the eyes, all that beauty actually comes from Africa, the North really? Africa. Well, yeah, I along with know Paris. this yeah. about Cleopatra writing books. Do her books still exist? Yes, her books still exist. She the I one on something that Cleopatra wrote. Yeah, and people have made her beauty stuff, and um, so. But this is the kind of stuff she did. <clears throat> and then the other thing, spa. <clears throat> she would have been a great owner of a spa. You know, she she was meant to own a spa because she knew everything about spa life, every lotion, every cream, everything you need to be to beautify yourself. But she also wrote a book on poison. Ooh, ooh. You know, she was an expert at poisonings. A master really, well, really. Yeah. Do you think she to employ that talent? <laughs> Do you think she ever had to employ that talent with anyone? Um. I would think so, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. wonder if she knew about antidotes to poisons also. You know, I would think so, right? Because yeah, but yeah, cool. isn't the legend true that's how she died by the bite of a snake? You know, was it, wasn't it self inflicted? Yeah, she knew yeah. that the bite of an asp could kill you. And I yeah. believe she took two asps out of two asp out and they bit her or she yeah. took them are they she took them out and agitated them so they would bite her yeah and i believe her assistant took poison and so when they broke into the vault uh she was already dead and oh. she, was, she was made very beautiful lying there dead and yeah. her slave was dying, but was found beautifying her and making her beautiful prior to her death. And they broke in and they said, well, uh, like they were angry at the slave who was making her beautiful and then died on top of her. So oh. that she would be beautiful. Well, that was rude. Now, that's devotion. That is I mean, devotion. Uh, uh, died yes. in the line of duty. I mean, yes, literally. she died beautifying. Oh. So they weren't able... They want they, they they wanted to kill she they showed her Mark Anthony's body and then took her back oh. to her area where she took her own. I want, I want to read more about Cleopatra now. You've got me intrigued. Yeah, me Very too. I, I find that. Now have you gotten your book yet? Oh yes, yes. I just got it uh yesterday. Yesterday. I haven't had a chance to crack it open yet, but I'm looking forward to this very much. Do you want to tell the audience a little bit about what we are doing with this book? Well, we are going to be interviewing the author uh, the last Tuesday of the month, our monthly book club, which mm -hmm. is one of my favorite things about doing this show because I love books and I love authors. So this is a real treat for me, you know, to get immersed in the book and then to have the privilege of talking one-on-one -on -one with the author. You know, and <laughs> I, I hope all of you can vicariously experience that through Whimsy and me. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. We, I, I think you love it too. We both love doing these. Interviews. Oh yeah, I've always dreamed of being able oh, to sit uh, and talk it, to authors. Yeah, it's. I have a feeling this is going to be quite a journey for me. I'm going to learn a lot yes. when I start yeah. reading this book. So maybe yeah. you're further into it, and you of course recommended it. So I'm, maybe you could yeah. tell a little yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So we receive books. If you would like your book to appear at Taco Tuesday, a book that you wrote and you'd like us to feature it and to try and get out of light there, uh, you can send it to uh, Dr. Whimsy Anderson at 1819 Southwest 5th Avenue, Suite 116, Portland, Oregon, 97201. And for the month of April, we chose Spark as our monthly selection written by Gail Ninehouse because we want to inspire you yeah. uh, to feed that spark of goodness inside yourself and go for your vision. Anything else? Well, I love how she, she says to embrace your authentic self. Mm -hmm. That's finding your spark. Well, hey, that sentence right there grabbed me when I saw that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you think of times when 
we are forced to be inauthentic. Uh, mm -hmm. When does oh. it start? When does it start? When does being, we're talking about the book Spark. You have time to get it. Uh, last Tuesday of the month, we'll be with the author. Okay, now I yep. want to have a question for you. Yes. When do you think we start the process of being uh, disingenuous? Uh, I think it's the moment we feel we have to please somebody in authority over us, say a parent, a school teacher. Uh, that's where I theorize it begins. You know, when you initially asked me that question, I thought, my God, I think any of us who have ever had to work a job we didn't want to do and we've had to please a boss, a superior, that's definitely being inauthentic. How many times we'd like to say what we really think and walk out the door, but we know we can't. Um, I, I think with my own mother, I, I definitely, that was a start of inauthenticity for me because I think I learned at an early age to please her, I had to be something other than what I was. I don't know how, if you feel that way or others agree with that, but that was true for me. Yeah, I mean, it's a really deep conversation. I mean, are we, is being genuine a luxury? Because you think about how many of us have the luxury of being free to be ourselves. I mean, you can say, be free to be yourself. I mean, that's all well and good. That's politically yeah. correct. Yeah. But if you're a slave or if you're living, if you're working and, and living in horrific conditions uh, with mm -hmm. a horrible boss that or a horrible yeah. husband or, or whatever, yeah, it's kind of, it just feels to me like that's a first world luxury. Yeah, because sometimes you have to do what you have to do just to survive a situation and to just get from day to day. So, you know, I've never thought of it that way when you use the term uh, a luxury to be authentic. Yeah. I, I guess in many ways it is or it certainly can be. Yeah, I mean, if you grew up in a home that was dysfunctional and if you yes. grew up in a home where you couldn't just turn to your parents and say, it doesn't even have to be extreme abuse. It can be a family where everyone grows up to be a doctor or the family business. And you say, you know what? I'd rather join the circus. Yeah. <laughs> you, have, you want to talk about, I, I was curious about your situation. Like you grew up with a lot of, you were not allowed to be authentic. Um, you know, I, as an artistic creative yeah. child. I was very misunderstood. You know, you know, I was basically a right brain person in a left brain world. I didn't fit in. I was, I saw things differently. So I got called stupid a lot. What's wrong with you? I, you know, it was after I went to college and I, because I went to art, an art school, I talked to other people who were actors, writers, musicians, painters, and they all said the same thing. I, nobody got me when I was a kid. And so I think we all learned we had to conform in some way just to be accepted by our parents, be accepted by our teachers. Um, otherwise, we are in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and I think that that is what she's saying here, is that we lose ourselves bit by bit. We compromise ourselves bit by bit, either because of what is expected of us by society, because of community, yeah. our parents, our jobs, our teachers, poverty, uh, injustice, child abuse. You know, there's so many ways we lose ourselves. And then we get to a certain age, we're just depressed. We, we stand, you just want your donuts and your uh, big brother whatever your favorite tv show is <laughs> uh, carol burnett <laughs> comfort yeah food. carol burnett okay yeah well the point is is that you've what you've done is you've abdicated your spark you've you've become yeah. so depressed you've mm -hmm. become cut off from that spark that is supposed to exist inside of us that gives us the yeah. good I think it's been the last four or five years of my life that I've been reclaiming my spark, you know, living my authenticity, pursuing my art, doing this show, doing my show, doing the videos for my channel. I'm doing a lot of things I love right now, make a lot less money than I used to, but I'm a hell of a lot happier and a lot more at peace with myself. And I actually look forward to my day when I get up in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, my job. 
I was working, you know, I had to be up at like four 30 in the morning to get ready and drive in Los Angeles traffic to be at a job at 7 AM, a job that I frankly was coming to hate. Uh, it almost felt like I was going to jail, you know, like I was pulling the prison door shut every day. That, and it was the pandemic that set me free. That's how I lost my job in the pandemic, uh, March of 2020. Um, unemployment kicked in and some things to keep me going until I could start getting the art career going and a few other ventures. And uh, yeah, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me, oddly yeah. enough. He has a full, he had a full time job and he works for me part time. So you were had a really a busy life, very busy life. Well, it's still a busy life, but at least it's a busy life filled with things that I want to be doing. That's a big difference. It's things that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. You know, I was friends with the actress Evelyn Keys. You know, she was a big movie star back in the 1940s and I knew her in her late 80s. And she I asked her, what's the secret? how do you stay young? How do you stay vital? And she said, it's having something to look forward to every day. It's something where you get out of bed in the morning and it's like, I can't wait to get started on this day. And her great love in her late life was writing. She couldn't wait to get to her computer and start writing. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Chuck, for sharing that. I just want to give a shout out to everyone who's kind enough to join us. We have 258 people here. It would be great if you could like and subscribe. Uh, let's go ahead and say hi to Joel Tilson. Joel is our official floor director. He's an amazing person out of Wyoming and an amazing cook. Joel. Sarah Huckleby Sanders is being investigated for fraud and misuse of state funds by the FDI. Um, uh, yeah. You want to talk a little bit before we do the impasse prayer about oh, some of the yeah. stuff coming in I'm, from Paul Tilson? Uh, um, did you hear I'm about sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, did you hear about his uh, comment, Sarah Huckleby Sanders being under criminal investigation with the FBI? No, no, I missed that. I did, I'm so sorry. I was reading the comments here real quick and I missed that. Oh, but go ahead, please. Did you me. want to read out loud for us? Well, I, no, that's important. I didn't know she was uh, under criminal investigation. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be interrupting you. What, what is the story? <laughs> uh, it looks like it just came out with Midas Touch that she was under investigation. Oh. And um, do you want to go ahead and say, uh, continue saying hi to people? We'll do the empaths. Yeah, prayer. I'm to say because I saw Wendy's comment here. Teachers would get mad because I would draw while they taught. But that's how I could learn best. I just had to comment. That was me too. Me too. Uh, you know, I was a very good student in school, high school, college, but I was always taking these notebooks and doodling. I'm just an inveterate doodler. And I would have teachers get mad at me and accuse me of not paying attention. And I had one teacher say, okay, Chuck, repeat back to me what I just said. And I repeated back everything word for word. And he said, well, I guess what you're doing works. Keep on doing it. So I, for me, drawing in the margins just calms my nerves. I, my brain tends to be overactive. So when I'm drawing, it calms me and I can absorb information much better. Yeah. So there's a, you know, well, actually, there's been a study on neural, uh, the neural links that are being formed with new data. And they think that what the child may be doing is moving as, they're, as the neural links so what you were doing is that the person would take a point and give you that sentence and then you would draw a line and then that line this line is to remember that sentence then you draw another line that sentence and then this sentence and then that sentence and that is the neural link that researchers finding so you've got this beautiful masterpiece and the guy comes up and says recite it and then you just go that line was this sentence that <laughs> But you see, that's the way an artistic mind works. And yeah. teachers who try to teach, shall we say, the gifted, talented, know this. They know how to teach this. And this is what we relate to. When you were, I hope we're not getting off the subject here, but when you were no, teaching, we're cool. okay, when you were working with me a few years back to get my naturopathic doctor's assistance license, and you were throwing at me third and fourth year medical school stuff, and I was freaking out, you were just, you were saying, don't think of it as a science. Think of it as an art. Think of it as an art. And you, you taught me through visual means. And when I, you know, I had a lot of studying to do, as you know. So when I would go home at night, I would spend a half an hour on one of the medical books or physiology, biology, whichever book it was. And then I'd take half an hour 
and just draw and paint. And I'd go back and forth, left brain, right brain, left brain, right brain. And it helped me to learn and absorb and you retain right. you. But you encouraged yeah. me. I think you only got two wrong. I think you only got two two wrong on the exam or something. He did very something well. Something like that. But I mean it. You're one of the best teachers I ever had in my life. You Thank are a you. gifted teacher. And I'm sure people out here know this about you. Oh, you're so sweet. Well, let's go ahead. We'll do the impasse prayer. We'll st keep saying hi to people as we go along. And man, do we have a lot to blitz about. Oh, my God. Let's just... Put ourselves in white light first, and then we're going to have a very serious conversation today. We're talking oh, okay. Illuminati. We're talking Diddy. We're talking Usher. We're talking Ooh. Justin Bieber, Beyonce, uh, Diddy Gow. Oh. The whole thing is the Illuminati real. Uh, all of that. What do people think about it? It, it, it is a day of Illuminati. That is what the uh, second half yeah. of the show is about. I think Let's it is. Is it, well, let's do the impasse prayer and then we'll get let's into it. Let's do the impasse prayer. Okay. Okay. I want to call on white light protection for myself and this community as we ask permission from spirit to access the Akashic records. We call on our spirit guides and our good angels to be with us. Please give us the clarity and the wisdom that is needed to empower all of us on our journeys to make the best decisions for ourselves, our families, the planet, the people we love, but also to help those that we may have strife with. And together, collectively, we say, Amen. Amen. Okay, so the first uh, thing that people did want to mention has to do with the fact that uh, Trump is really kind of falling apart. He's not doing too well. Really? Uh, He's gonna leave old Durham. That's a song go. I don't know how to get rid of that. Does anybody know how to get rid of this top part here? I love to. Yeah, yeah. This. He, he fell asleep. Yeah, I heard that he fell asleep with his mouth open. I don't know if he's snoring <laughs> or what. Oh, you get Baltic there. You know, I it's mean, just. Shouldn't laugh. I'm, but well, I'll tell you honestly. Well, they say I don't know how much people um, I don't know how much people know, but seven jurors have already been selected. I saw that. I saw they're having a hard time, but I think they were probably expecting this because it's hard, hard to get an impartial jury. You know, when you're dealing with a famous public figure, and then when it's such a polarizing public figure as Trump. You know, there's probably no one who does not have an opinion one way or the other about him. Mm -hmm. So how do you get a fair jury? Yeah, I mean, like I would have, I would have said, I'm, I do political satire. I'm like a broke John Stewart. They would, you know, I'm not going to get through the front door, and everybody knows it. So it's like, why waste your time? But, um, yeah. but that's the problem. Also, they brought in something like 600 people, and all you have to do is say, I can't be impartial. See ya. Yeah, I, mean, I heard uh, many people were were let go. Mm -hmm. At least I should say. Yeah. So if they've set seven jurors and then his people start digging up dirt to try and disqualify them, uh, which is what this group is known for, this sort of thing, then instead of seating twelve, I'm sure they're probably going to have like how many alternates? You'd have to have like fifty alternates, wouldn't you? You know, I, that's a good point. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about alternates. I didn't even think about that. But yes, you would have to have quite a few, certainly mm -hmm. for a, a case like this. Yeah, because the whole point is to slow it down as much as possible. So I can imagine. So and the fact that they had that many, first off, because it was the Trump trial. And secondly, I think they're going to have to, they're going to be go only four alternates are allowed, Joel. Whoa. Oh, seven. Oh, alternates. Only four. Well, That's the seven have been picked K so far, but the question is how many alternates will they be picking for? Well, because in the O.J. Simpson case, didn't they have a total of 18 or something? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jill. Yeah, Jill just said 12 jurors and six alternates. Is that uh, crazy? Uh, somebody said they need 18 total. Uh, well, oh, we're getting different answers here. Um, well, that would, yeah. But it, it seems like that's a low number of alternates. 
you know, for something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh. Let's go ahead and take a look if uh, he's he's going to be ready. Is the jury going to be set this week? Yes or no? Is the jury going to be set this week? Yes or no? Is the jury for Donald Trump going to be set this week? Well, I'm I'm getting a yes. I'm getting a yes. What are you getting? Yeah, I'm getting a yes, Knight of Cups, yeah. which means that they're ready to see Knight of Cups is to do an offer or, um, you know. Yeah. Um, I guess my next question to you is, and I think it's a legitimate question, and I would invite the entire audience to join us. Do you feel objectively, can, can who here feels that you could be impartial? Who here thinks... Ooh. Yes, I have these emotions about this individual, but I truly will be impartial. I just want to get a, a, some hands or some kind of signal. Mm -hmm. How many people here truly believe? And I'd be curious also if you're in New York City. Yeah, I don't think I could. Mm -hmm. Let's see if anybody does respond here. Anybody out there? Yeah, Sharon just said, no way you can't do that. That's me. No way. Can't do it. <laughs> okay, now Tony. Yes. Uh, getting more no's and I can't. Okay. You know? All right. You know? No, I'll, I'll tell you. Okay. I, Jill said I think I could. Okay. All right. Good. But here's the reason why, because the controversy about him is that he's not going to get a, a fair. He. It's not possible for. And it's not right what's being done to him simply because he is a U.S. citizen and he should should have been given more pride. His basic rights as a U.S. citizen are not going to be granted. He can't get a fair trial in New York. Do you do, who here thinks that there is objectively some truth to that? Or are we just so gung ho to get this guy? Uh, I think there's <sighs> some truth to that. And I also think I'm gung ho to get this guy like a lot of us but yeah i think there is at least some validity to that i mean just from my opinion it's all right so thing. now uh i think people want to throw cards about what they think the uh outcome would be so let's go ahead and take a look at that what do we mm. think the outcome, you mean the outcome of the trial or the outcome yeah. of the jury selection what do you mean specifically yeah uh, let's check the uh, outcome of the trial what it's looking like Oh. I dropped a card on the floor here, and that may have meaning, the fact that it fell on the floor. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, one fell on the floor, so it wanted to be seen. Which okay. was this. I'm sorry. I hope I'm not interrupting you. I, no, I, no. This is what dropped on the floor. Business. Business. But I, the two cards I initially pulled were compromise and judgment. I would take that to mean some sort of judgment, some, but some sort of settlement with court. I mean, with Trump, um, a deal. Do you think that's mm -hmm. what that could be by compromise? Mm -hmm. And then business... Hmm. I'm not sure quite what to read into that, but it wanted, this card definitely wanted to come out. So maybe you can. Elaborate. I feel that the prosecution does not want to, here's what it looks like. I, I'm in the, who here would like me to read the Akashic field for, oh, you know, you love it. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, no, I'll, I'll tell you honestly what, uh, well, I asked permission from spirit. I prayed. So it's not like I'm, it's illegal or anything. Oh, here, I'll pull this this way. I'll give you a nice background there. Okay. Um, basically what they're saying is, is that the prosecution does not require a lot of time that the prosecution re can rest after three days because we do not want to make this trial longer or more complicated than it needs to be because the actual accusations are just based on 
Like it's a very, they're very, they don't want to go all over the place. They, uh, the, their best chances to convict this individual is to simply stick to the facts of what he's being accused of. And they feel that they can get through the majority of it within a few days, in which case they feel if the jury just focuses on the evidence that, that was presented by prosecution over those that three to four day period, that they should be able to deliver a verdict relatively soon and then have a very nice summer vacation. Those are what the Akashic Fields is saying. For starters, we see unbelievable, uh, I'm sorry, I'm squawk, squawk, squawking. Does this help? It doesn't sound yeah. like you're I, I do I do hear squawk. This might be better. Um, so we have partnership, and then we have the uh, the um, hermit card. So it's like a it's a highly intelligent uh, a, a highly intelligent kind of mastery and cooperation working on the part of the offense. In terms of, I mean, the prosecution. It's very. In terms of the. Uh, the uh, jurors, the jurors rest and then they're out of there. Well, they, you know, you've got the four of swords and then chariot. That tells me they're in and out of there quickly. Hopes mm -hmm. and the, he's terrified of the judgment. And look at that seven of swords. He wants to flee. But look at this yeah. four of swords retracted and then they're done by this summer. Mm -hmm. I think this, I think uh, easily by June, between by wow. June, this could, this could be done very soon. Wow. Before the Republican convention. Yeah, I mean, I don't get, um, I don't get uh, that it's particularly uh, a complicated case based on those that field. No. You know, it's like four of swords; they're resting and holding with their decision, which is what you would expect. And then chariot, poosh, they're out of there. So that tells me I don't see a hung jury. I would have gotten a hanged man. Yeah, I don't get seven of cups like they're confused. I get that they're out of there quickly yeah. well do you feel there will be a plea deal i mean when i got this card compromise judgment and compromise mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so they he might not be guilty on all counts uh -huh. yeah because there were a lot of counts you know yeah Okay, so moving on to the Illuminati. Have you been keeping up with the news, my darling? Oh my God. And I mean, oh my God. <laughs> when you sent me all of those videos, this, the, you, you started sending me things on Saturday. I started watching these. I started taking notes. And, uh, you know, it just creeped me out all the more that I've actually met Diddy. I've actually stood two feet oh, from really? him. Yeah, well, I, I told you that that time he came into the store. You know, that time he wouldn't let the um, oh yeah the, the approached him take a selfie, and he said it's because I've been to the gym and I'm sweaty and I can't control my pictures once they get out there and and all. But anyway, I've been in his presence, and the more I see about this man, the more I see about all of this, it just creeps me out. But anyway, and I didn't interrupt you what you were going to say. No, that's what I was asking. And so I, I, you know, it's what what the heck is going on? Is is it is it blackmail? A la what we saw with is this just another version of an old scam? Is is this just the same thing that Roger Stone did? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, I, could you explain a little more about that? What what Roger well, Stone it, did? He invited people to parties and then blackmailed oh, yes. them. Yes, that's right. Yeah, because uh, you know that's the accusation that this is something that's been going on for a long, long time. You know, party these parties where uh -huh. all of these bizarre rituals take place, and major celebrities get photographed and video recorded doing these compromising things, and they are forever blackmailed as a result of it. But it's also people just so desperate to rise to higher tiers in show business. I guess literally willing to sell your soul to the devil. You know, it's, Oh God, it sounds so freaking evil. I mean, it just sounds so evil because I mean, is this a gang? Are we talking about, this is just an image I took off the web. This is a gang symbol. It's also the Illuminati symbol. Jay-Z yeah. showing, yeah. this is like they're showing a gang symbol 
yeah, Jay-Z she and Beyonce. Say. And now people are saying that it's being linked with the boule. Um, do you know anything about the boule? The boule, no, I don't. Could you explain that, please? So you had the you had the um, Masons wouldn't were uh, wouldn't let black people join the Masons. Oh, you know, yeah. uh, so they and, and a lot of uh, fraternities wouldn't let uh, black people in. So black oh. people started their own fraternities, yeah. and. Um, people believe that the boule or that these Illuminati or private societies came out of those private uh, clubs out in college, that that's when people first like, get involved. Yeah, and that this like was God's simply another was version. Of the same was that at Harvard or Yale? Uh, supposedly two or three president, American presidents belong to it. You know? Yeah. Was it Skull and Bones? Was it Skull and Bones? I think so. So, um, yeah, some secret society. Right. Uh, was okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, you know, when you sent me all these videos, I wanted to research Illuminati more because I knew we were going to be talking about it on the show, and I, I only saw little bits and pieces. But certainly, you know, illuminate usually means something good, positive, shedding light on something. But this is like the opposite. It's like darkness. It's like evil touches upon satanic things and controlling the world and these people uh with these grand visions of themselves like they almost see themselves as a god well the other question that people want to know is it goes back to what you and i had said in the past which is what what would you do for fame and is this even if is this even an issue of fame or is it a, an issue of blackmail? Are they basically saying, hey, I blackmailed this person, so I get to take 50% of the profits because I've got film footage of you doing whatever? Well, I think it's a bit of both, a bit of both, because, you know, because I have pursued acting in this town and I've known many actors. I have known people who would literally do anything to become famous, to become a star. And I don't know if they ever had opportunities like this, but I've known people to have that kind of desperation and that lack of character and lack of values where if they were offered an opportunity like this, they would probably accept it, you know, because I'm sure that's part of the deal. You know, they try to make this very tantalizing, like we recognize your talent, we know your name and you come with us and you do what we tell you, we're going to make you a star beyond your wildest dreams. You know, it's like the, the poison apple biting into it. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, I can see where people get tempted to fall into this trap. But then if that person truly is that talented and brilliant and they do become a big star, that person like Diddy is going to have control over them, be like a Svengali, you know, pull the strings and, as you said, get get a lot of the profits of them. It, it makes sense to me. Yeah, so now people are saying, now the big thing that's coming out is just how many people have been blacklisted in Hollywood and people are saying that this scheme, pay-to-play schemes, blackmail schemes, making someone famous and then basically holding them hostage has yeah. is an old thing in Hollywood. Often oh, blacklist is very old. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't interrupt you, what you were saying. No, I, that, I guess that was my question. I know that you know a lot about I mean, old. There are just, there's stories going back decades and decades in Hollywood. You know, Hollywood is, goes back to the 19 teens, the movie industry. I can think of many examples of blacklisting. Um, I don't want to give names here, but a very good friend of mine, she was on her way to an A-list career. She starred in some big movies and a very big director blackballed her and she didn't work for several years, purely on a whim. Uh, I've heard this about other people in power, great stars. Uh, you get on their bad side. You don't work anymore. You get blacklisted in the industry. Um, you reminded me, we were talking about this before the show about the, you know, the communist red scare. Mm -hmm. So many writers and actors got blackballed. Um, getting back to Lucille Ball, she almost had her career destroyed 
and not only, you know, it's because, she, you know, just to tell it very quickly, in 1936, her commun, her, you know, when being a communist was not that bad of a deal at the time, her grandfather was a communist, but he was more of a socialist, but he made the entire family register under the communist party. Lucy signed a paper. And uh, during the Red Scare of the early 50s, that came back to haunt her. It <gasps> almost destroyed her, would have destroyed Desi's career. It, the hundreds of people who worked at their studio, their jobs would have been gone. I Love Lucy would have been destroyed. Uh, CBS would have been brought down because I Love Lucy was their number one show, biggest moneymaker. Uh, even MGM Studios would have gone down because of it because Lucy and Desi had just made a movie called The Long, Long Trailer and it had not been released yet. And a scandal like that would have killed the movie. And MGM had, they were on the brink of bankruptcy and that movie they were counting on to save the studio. So they would have gone down. CBS would have gone down. I Love Lucy would have been gone after two seasons. Lucy and Desi would have been destroyed. So oh yeah, my God. Very, real, very real. You know, you wonder if any anybody or any system should have that much power. You know what I mean? It's just terrifying to me. I really yeah. think it's terrifying. It, it is scary. It is scary. I, you know, uh, so many actors come out here come out to Hollywood. I was one of them. They're very naive stars in our eyes. And we're just looking at all the glamour and glitz and the right. red carpet and being a, on the big movie screen. And there's a whole darker side to all of this that, you know, I've lived in LA 39 years. And because I've talked to so many people who work at the studios, you know, security guards, limo drivers, makeup artists, technicians, you name it. They're the people who have the stories. And they have the truth. And these are people who don't sign those non-disclosure forms. So they're free to talk. And I've heard just horror things, horror mm -hmm. things. I hope I didn't get off the track here while we were going to oh, talk. No, about. I'm so glad. I actually asked you, we, we have a meeting before we go online and we have a stuff we go through. Well, Chuck and well, I, somebody and just made a comment. Me actually, no, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm so sorry, but someone made a comment here. Please refrain from using the term blackballing and blacklisted. It's racist. I apologize, but I did not mean that as a racist it's term. Not a re it's not a um, reference to uh, yeah. people who are African American. Exactly. It's, I just wanted to clarify. You're on a blacklist or you're on the list to get into the party. And it, Precisely. Uh, it, yeah. it was, exactly. uh, it had to do with the color of the type. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, that the type was black or blue, uh, different colors of the type. So the black list was the list of people. I think it had to do with the color of the type. If you were on yeah, the exactly. black list or if you were on the blue list, different list. Uh, if yeah. you were on the red list, so the different list colors. Also. The red list was, yeah, I think the the black list was about basically if you were communist, but. Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't. Uh, it, it wasn't a. It, it wasn't about the uh, civil rights movement. It was. Yeah, about I felt we needed to clarify that comment very yeah. quickly. That was yeah. definitely. You should get word. confused with the word black because of. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the good point yeah. that if you have yeah. if you don't clarify, people can get that impression. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so the this this is the latest controversy now coming out is that. Um, Justin Bieber is claiming that he may have been sexually abused by mm. Kim Kardashian. Whoa. Dear God. Um, doesn't shock me. Doesn't shock <laughs> me. But I, I mean, I, it's, I certainly hope it's not true, but I wouldn't be shocked if it were. Yeah, evidently he's starting to talk and he's claiming that the psychological trauma was worse being molested by her than by Diddy. So he's claiming both of them. God, that's horrible. I mean, we've heard these stories of a lot of these, uh, you know, boy bands big in the eighties and nineties. And a lot of these, you know, they're grown men now and several of them have come forward and said they were sexually abused. Um, I think there were even rumors about Ricky Martin I forget which band he was part of originally mm -hmm. as a teenager. So the questions that are coming in are, do you think that this is going to expand? And do you think that we're going to see more prosecutions and not just Diddy? I think so. I think so. It, it just, I mean, 
I can't say that authoritatively, but intuitively, I feel yes. Yes, especially after watching a lot of these videos today and just seeing this, it's, I know I'm using a cliche here, but it just feels like the tip of the iceberg. Like there is so much more beyond this. Yes, it was Menudo. That's who um, Ricky Martin was with. Thank you. Oh my so, God. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and throw some cards on it. Uh, will this get worse in Hollywood? Uh, should that be a pendulum? Will this? Well, okay. Will this get worse in Hollywood? That's the question. And find my pendulum. Will this get worse? The situation is that is a well. That's a very clear and obvious yes. That's very yes. I don't even know if I needed the pendulum to do that. Yeah, it's 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 almost like a house that term house of cards falling. It just feels like everything is starting to collapse. Even reminds me of what we've been talking about, the royal family, the British monarchy, how that seems to be crumbling apart. It seems to be a metaphor for Hollywood too, the show business mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. I think uh, John has something. Can you read what John Prance? Let's see what did John, I'm trying to find it here. John, uh, John Francis from Google. The origin of the word goes back to the 1700s when club members would cast secret votes on membership using white and black wooden or ivory balls. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so right. it's not a, it, it doesn't it's not have, a, a, it's not a race reference. It's a re to the yes, selection yes. process. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I yes, didn't think it did, but much. you never know. So I'm getting, I'm, I learn things every day here. Oh yeah. So, would be here. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, here's one other comment I should read. Black people do not like that term use in the ways it has been. So the vernacular of started that way is still inferred to include black people in a derogatory. Uh, we're, 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 we're referring to it to the original meeting. Yeah, we're uh, referring to the original about the new thing. Yeah. And um, one who seeks, you're ignoring me, that, but that's okay. Uh, I'm one who so seeks, what did, what did they say? Did we read what one who seeks black well, people? Let me go back that. here. So, no, so sorry. Black right people now. do not like the term. Yes, we read that. We read yeah, that. I'm just Earth looking there. through the comments here. Uh, could you re please tell us what it is that you said, please? I, we, I'm probably... Promise we're but, not trying uh, to dark again, dark and light. Yeah. It just that goes all the way to Zoroasterism, though. Yeah. So, uh, Zoroasterism predates Islam and even Judaism, and it had to do with the yeah. fact that the good God brought the sun, and so they would wake up in the morning to greet the good God who brought the sun, and then the bad God would take the sun away. So, there was a God of the morning, and there was a God of the night in Zoroasterism, yeah. So the god of the day and the god of the night. Yeah. And this duality of good and bad. I'm sorry, please go ahead. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know I don't mean to talk over you, but the one or six, I've been schooled not to use those terms by black people. So yeah, we can create a different term. Well, you know, that's that's certainly valid what you're saying there. You know, we're just mm -hmm. Be so we could, call, we could uh, so what would we call it? I, I mean, it was I don't know. The point is is that people would get on list and they would be outed, uh, marked. I, could, I guess you could yeah. say marked, right? Like the mark, mark of chain yeah. might be a better way of looking at it in the sense that once you are marked, you're never, like what you're saying is you're never gonna work again, whether it's if you don't sleep yeah. with that person or, or et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. There are rumors going around that Jaden may have, may have also been trafficked. That makes me feel horrible because it goes back to this idea of these aristocratic parties where yeah. not the same ethics as you and I. Is that what we're hearing? I mean, not the same ethics. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. And, you know, even uh, I think you touched upon this last week, and I saw that in uh, the videos about how there could even be two parties taking place in these mansions where there's the one that's more legit where they invite a list people to give a certain amount of credibility but then on another floor of the mansion is the um, other party where all of this activity is taking place uh -huh. yeah 
Yeah. So, I mean, I thought it was really interesting. I thought it was an interesting topic for us to talk about. I didn't even think that uh, about this cultural context that it, because uh, I had never heard that reference because my dad was, my dad was on the list. So we had a different horror story. We had a different perception of things, you know, because my dad yeah. was on my list uh and uh they took this off how we educate each other. each other you know this is great yeah so he mm -hmm. was an artist he was a a comedian and um he was one of the people where the fbi came and wanted to ask him a few questions and that night they packed they were living in san francisco and that night they packed everything and went to mexico and it ruined his life you know he never recovered because oh, you know he was a songwriter my father Really? You never told me that. Uh, yeah. And uh, I don't think he ever recovered mentally from that. He he uh, he was on the verge of becoming famous. Uh, they did a musical performance on NBC, Andy, Andy. I mean, like he wrote the whole thing and they guys and dolls cast perform it. He was like on the verge. And the next thing you know, the FBI is knocking on his door. So, oh my God. yeah, it, it's. Um, so sorry. As uh, the child of somebody who comes from that culture, we just have a different perception of everything. So sure. But it's a good opportunity to just have that conversation. Oh, uh, we forgot to do the Royals. <laughs> we always end with the Royals. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's do <laughs> it. So, Kosanka, hi, Kosanka. Thank you for your question. I'm so glad we're having this call. It's important, though, to talk about because we want to be sensitive to everybody's feelings. So that's yeah. why we're, you're, we're getting educated, right? We are. Um, okay, so what did what? Okay, uh, from Wendy Melbourne, please don't forget Willie and Kate, not USA topic at the moment, but uh, well, I don't know what more. I, I mean, Willie, Willie talked and Kate talked. I mean, uh, I don't know what, uh, what more will Kate say? I mean, uh, what did she say? You know, basically that the relationship is over, that he moved yeah. out six months ago, nine months ago. <laughs> And that she's over it and that she wishes everybody else would get over it. She did tell me some more stuff, by the way, if y'all want to hear it. Uh, since you guys asked. There we go. Um, she, uh, Kate. Kate said, hello, I'm Kate. Um, she said that, I, that, that his fight with Megan, his going after Megan and this righteous need to go after Megan is one of the things that caught, that tore our marriage apart, actually, because I didn't want to be in the middle of it. I mean, it literally, it got worse and worse and worse. And then the counterattacks, and then I got pushed into it. They were blaming me, like, I'm in on this. Keep me out of it, that you've got this war going on with Megan. And then trying to pull me in and trying to get me to sign things, like, we're buddying in on this. This pressure between us because he's got something going on with her is one of the things that tore us apart. Yeah. So if he's going to continue to do this, you know, leave me out of it. I'm trying, I'm trying to get well. I'm sick. I've got kids to raise. I haven't seen this guy in nine months. He doesn't even return my text. I don't want to be in the middle of it. Quite frankly, you know, yeah. that's, that's me as Kate. And I, uh, I think that he, he just, you know, he tore his freaking family apart with this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And well, you know, I watched your video last night. You channeled William. Was it last night? Yeah. Uh, he, he, well, he never wants to talk to me. That was, I was like, he's like, all right, I'm ready to talk. Oh. So, you got my saying. attention. <laughs> I saw that pop up. Hear him? That I never channeled like that before, and I was yeah. thinking, like after it was over, I was thinking. He said, "You know what he said last night? He said, um, in 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 about two weeks' time, you're going to be hearing some things about me, and um, I just really hope you'll be gentle." Oh, God. Whoa. I just what more is coming? I just. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's, it's just, the soap opera in the world. I know. Did you yeah. have fun today? Did you have fun? I had fun today? I had fun today. This was this was a good show. I enjoyed this. I enjoy and I enjoyed the comments from everyone. I'm glad yes, we got yes. some things and learned some things today. You know, yes. it's my favorite thing. I love to learn. 
grow. Well, evolve. that's why we call we were going to call this show the Remote View, and then instead we ch changed it to Tacos Tuesday. But we might take it back, and uh, I'll let the people vote if they want it to stay Taco Tuesdays or if you want it to be called the Remote View, which was the original call of the show. But um, and that's the great thing about everybody has a view, everybody has an opinion, and it's so yes. important to let yeah. people speak their truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Respect. All right, everybody, be kind to all so that all will be kind to you, too. If you're trying to get in for a reading with me, you can find the information below. Chuck, are you ready for bookings yet? Yes or no? Uh, maybe early May. Early May. Early I've just May? so much going on right now with classes and everything. I'd rather start out fresh early May. But I'll All right. So if you're trying to get in a, read with, a reading with Chuck. He will be open for business uh, after mid-May. It would be my honor. I'd love yeah. to hear. All right. We'll see you, everyone. Uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you later, everyone. Be sure and see check later. out his captivating chronicles and also his cat Sasha's channel. Yes. yes. And, Please uh, like and subscribe. Yeah. Thank you we'll so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It's a lot.